So if there is an opportunity to pour one out, as they say, for uh, the homies, it would be for our passenger quarter panel fender area as Eric, our boy, our social media rep, decided to take on a uh, incline into a parking lot in a Slam D30 in the wintertime. And it has brought to our attention that this is because of the fact that Mr. Eric has a tendency to not drive Slam cars at all. And we probably figured that there's a couple people out there that probably don't drive Slam cars. And it results in, you know, crying moments such as that when the car comes back and you notice that it's missing paint and then you find out that there might be a little bit of rust underneath there. And you just want to duke it out. You just want to throw some elbows, drop some hands, choke some necks. And <clears throat> not that we're upset, but we figured this would be a great opportunity to talk to people about some, some tips. Some tips for driving a slammed car. Because it's not as easy as what everybody says. It's not just like you, you, you slam it on the ground and, and you go in a straight line. You never turn. You never have to deal with anything. Well, obviously you have to turn, Eric. And when you're turning at 30 miles an hour or 20 miles an hour in the wintertime, yeah, you're going to do some damage. You can do some damage. Eric, if you're watching this, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. But anyway, I'm Alex from Fitment Industries. Don't forget to subscribe. If you're looking for wheels, tires, suspension, fitmentindustries.com. That's the sales plug. Let's get into it. Tips for driving a slam car. Now, you might be watching this thinking, Alex, why are you giving me tips for driving a slam car? First off, I know more than you. My car's lower than yours. And that might be true. But that still doesn't mean that I can't give you a couple tips on driving a slam car because, well, we've made the mistakes. We've done it before. And we're here to let you know that when you crack that oil pan when you're going over the Walmart roundabout, or you're going over the speed bump in front of TJ Maxx and you crack it, you just know that you should have watched this video to begin with. So the first tip that we have for you is obviously watch the potholes. Now that's a pretty obvious statement, so I am going to push it one step further and just assume all potholes are gateways to hell. Because when you really think about it, no matter how small the pothole is, you should not touch it with any facet of your car, with any, there's not even limbs on a car, but it shouldn't touch any limb of your car at any point in time at all. Here's the reason, even small potholes can cause enough damage in terms of like pop up if you don't have the appropriate spring rate and then it hits the fender and you're not surprised or you are surprised because you didn't expect the pothole to be as big as it is and then it's a three piece wheel and you bend a lip or it's you know one piece cast and you shatter it or you crack it or something like that, you start losing air, it all happens because sometimes Really, it's not that we hit potholes. We usually just assume the pothole or the bump wasn't that big to begin with. And then you hit it or you're going 65 miles an hour on the highway and you don't realize it's as big as what you thought it was, which by the way, that's what she said. And you just kind of are taken back and you're like, wow, that was huge. Also, that's what she said. And here's another thing that you probably thought that you had under the bag, but you really don't, would be speed bumps. And I know, up here in the north there, and north down under, and the old accent about the Wisconsin nights, there's not a whole lot of roundabouts or speed bumps or anything that you really gotta worry about in terms of having to slow down as the car goes over the bumps. But if you go into the bigger areas, you're gonna notice that there's a lot of speed bumps. And if you're driving a slam static car, I can't do it anymore. If you're driving a slam static car, a lot of times we get uh, probably, well, I mean, I do, agitated every single time that there's a speed bump every 20 feet and you just end up saying you know what if I just send it I'll probably be okay and maybe we'll just get through it but then you realize that the first speed bump was like a tutorial level then the second speed bump was the real it was the big bitch. and then you go into it and you don't expect it and then you peek over the speed bump and then you just float there because your car's too low to have the front go up or the front go down. So then you try to rock it. If you guys have ever rocked your car over a speed bump, I know it sounds pretty petty, but you end up having to do that. What we usually recommend is that if you see a speed bump or you see more than one speed bump, just avoid it. And if you are gonna do it, go at it at an angle, straight wheels, straight steering wheel. Don't try to curb because you're gonna end up having some damage to the fenders anyway if it starts clipping and you definitely don't wanna do that. Keep it straight, go on over. And if you're gonna send it, just make sure to do it full send and just go all the way through. Don't stop halfway through, then sit there as you're teeter-tottering in front of Petco while your mom is staring at you oddly as you're trying to get your car over a speed bump. And then she reminds you that it was really pointless for you to slam the car to begin with because it has absolutely no functional purpose, but then you have to say, it looks cool, mom, and that's just the way we do it. And Fibon Industries told me it was cool. Here's another thing that you probably didn't think about, which would have been, uh, well, you know, driveways. Now, I know you're thinking, Alex, I get it, driveways. You have to go at an angle, you gotta keep the steering wheel straight, you have to do the same thing as you're going out, I get it. But knees weak, arms sweaty, there's vomit on your sweater because of mom's spaghetti, he's nervous. There's other things in the statement, it's a wrap, I don't know. There was some guy that sang it one time, just kidding, I know Eminem. Rest in peace, MGK. And when you're going into like 
driveways, there's a couple other things that you have to remember. So first thing is, is that if you're truly driving a slam static car, or if you're truly just driving a slam car, a lot of people get nervous when they're leaving a driveway because they end up scraping their front lip or some sort of piece at the bottom side of the car. And then they stop, they go forward, and they try to straighten out their car instead, which ends up doing more damage because they actually can't make it out of the driveway. If you are truly driving a slam static car, you can just like kiss your lip goodbye. Because I can just promise you, you're going to rip it off, tear it off, you're going to disconnect it, it's going to tear off by itself, you're going to have the quick fasteners for the front bumper, that's going to rip off at some point. You just have to be okay with the fact that at some point, a driveway is going to take the life of something that you love, and it's going to be your front lip or your front splitter, or it's going to be a rear diffuser because you just thought you'd leave at 9 o'clock at night and just kind of dip out super quick, and you didn't do what you were supposed to, which was angle out of the driveway. You ultimately end up breaking it apart, you put it in your trunk before anybody else notices that you broke anything, you buy a new part and pray that it comes in in time for the next car show so that nobody else notices. I get it. You might be asking yourself, Alex, how are you a psychic? And the answer is, is because every single thing that I've stated, I've seen people do. So driving a slam car on a driveway is not necessarily like a craft, more than just expecting that you're gonna damage things over time. Because especially considering how aggressive driveways will get with a slam car, you're gonna hurt something. It's better off for you to hurt the front lip or your rubber polyurethane bushing or whatever, or polyurethane lip that you have on the front bumper than to actually start messing with your wheels or fender. So you're better off keeping that straight when you're going back, but at an angle and having yourself a little bit of rub on the front lip or the back, or if you have any sort of exhaust system that's on the bottom, versus doing something like going at it straight down because you're scared that you're gonna rip off your front lip and instead you end up just, you know, scratching your entire fender. And the next thing would probably be automatic car washes. So I know that you've gone to your car shows, you're getting ready to roll, you're ready to pull up into the car show, then you realize you gotta wash your car and you're like, oh, and you try to go and you go onto Google, you're like, uh, car washes near me. And you find one and it's called like, oh, suds in me, or like some sort of odd, weird 2001 porno style like car wash name. It's just weird. And you get there and you look at it and you're like, this is questionable. First off, it's touch car wash. It's not a touchless. So you already know that you're screwed from the get go. But then you see it. You see the little hooves that hold your wheel in place. They're like, they, they look like this. And you're like, oof. And then you see the bars that are running on both sides. You know what I'm talking about. And you're like, ah but I really want a clean car. So then you're gonna pay the money into that old system that doesn't actually take $5 bills for some reason, and you're gonna, you're gonna get the thing, you're gonna, walk, you're gonna drive in, and you're gonna make the mistake. And you know you shouldn't have entered the car wash to begin with, but you do it because you want a clean car, and you end up slamming your car, either some sort of suspension component, your side skirts, your side flares, your front lip, your diffuser, your wheels on some part of the actual automatic car wash. Let me give you a tip when it comes to driving a slam car because a lot of times when you drive slam car, you're gonna have some sort of arrow that goes along with it. Any sort of automatic car wash, you're gonna wanna stay away from unless it doesn't have the hooves to begin with, which not a lot of car washes south of like Quick Trip actually host. So if you're looking at anything like pre-2014, they're almost always gonna have those hooves on it and anything like pre-2010 are always gonna have the bars because that's how how the systems used to be way back in the day because they just hoped that you had a tire sidewall that would be able to take the impact versus hitting the rim. Whereas now everything is kind of stretched or sports style wheels and things like that. So they've kind of gotten outdated over time, but don't risk a clean car for damaging your, well, your car. And last but not least, our final tip is to stay away from any standing water whatsoever. So a lot of times people love puddles. I love puddles because, you know, it's fun and you get to drive through them and you feel like a truck guy because you're like, truck stuff! And you go through and the water kicks up on the side and everybody's happy. And then you're wondering, you know, what, what happened because now your TPMS sensor or your TPMS is going off. Maybe you've got steam running from your engine, you have a cracked barrel or your wheels cracked because you just happened to go through a puddle, which was also sitting in a pothole, which goes back to reason number one. Just stay away from standing water on the side of the road, especially if you want to keep your car alive for as long as humanly possible. Pretty much car, like potholes, standing water, uh, speed bumps, and uh, car washes are the devil. So if you want to stay away and keep your car clean uh, and not actually damage it from doing anything, you're going to want to just pretty much put it in a bubble and never drive it at all because that's the biggest tip we could possibly give you, even though we know you're not going to do that. So let us know what tips you have for driving a slam static car, or if you just like to say send it and just replace barrels every single year like our boy Brian in here likes to do, that's fine too. If you're looking for wheels, tires, suspension, don't forget to check out fitmentindustries.com. I'm Alex from Fitment Industries, and we will see you later. Peace.